Dear brothers, dear sisters, we are blessed and we are fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed His bounties on us. We are now in the sacred months of Rajab. We just finished Rajab and Ramadan is approaching. In these beautiful months, many of our shaykh will talk about the virtues of Rajab and the virtues of Shaban and the virtues of Ramadan and how Siyam in the Qur'an falls between two worlds. It falls between Iman and falls between Taqwa, i.e. Siyam and fasting is like a bridge between Iman and Taqwa. And if you fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His bounties and out of His favors will bestow Taqwa on us and will become pious and will become sincere. Today's reminder is actually about knowledge because in everything in life we need knowledge in order to acquire what we want to acquire. And the Prophet والسلام, was sent as a teacher. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in a way that we can acquire knowledge. It's one of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us that we can learn and acquire knowledge. And knowledge, as you know, is one of the sha'ira of this ummah, is one of the trademark of this ummah of Islam. That the first few verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran is Iqra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq. Read in the name of thy Lord, the one who created. Fani'matu al-ilmi ka ni'mat al-khalq. The bounty and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of bestowing knowledge on us is like his favor of creating us. اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقْ So many times in this surah, the word iqra is repeated, the word knowledge is repeated, and the word khalq is repeated. And in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described four types of knowledge. From the beneficial knowledge to the knowledge that will cause a person to the knowledge that will cause people to oppress and that's not the beneficial knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ was sent to us as a teacher and he described himself as inna I was sent but a teacher and Allah subhanahu wa described him in the Quran and he says Hu it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent from amongst us a messenger from amongst us. Why? لِيَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ To recite the Qur'an to us, to recite the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us as is, to transmit knowledge as is, without increase, without decrease, to transmit knowledge accurately. And when we learn, we try to learn accurately. When we transmit knowledge, we try to transmit knowledge accurately. When we quote people, we quote them accurately. We do not add, we do not subtract. We do not put words in their mouths that they did not say. We do not twist what they say. We do not twist the knowledge. We do not change it. And changing knowledge and changing things is something that is very detestable in Islam. The highest, the highest reality and the highest truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to change that truth becomes Someone becomes a disbeliever and someone becomes a mushrik and goes to hellfire wal billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Realities and truths must remain as truth. And knowledge is one way to acquire those truths. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is no deity save Allah. And the Prophet Wasallam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran that he sent a messenger from amongst ourselves, Yatlu alayhim ayati, recite to us the verses and revelation and scripture. 
وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ and to purify us وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ and to teach us the book and wisdom to teach us the Qur'an and revelation and to teach us wisdom through his words, through his actions, through his behavior, through his approval when we do something in front of him and he approves, when we do something in front of him and he disapproves. And this is our role as well with our children, with our friends, with our communities, with our families. Sometimes our children will not be able to learn from a lengthy speech. But when they see you doing something, they learn. They learn by demonstration. They learn by observing. They learn by acquiring knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa described us in the Quran that He created us. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shayhan. We know nothing. When we are born, we are like a clean page, an empty page. But out of His mercy, He gave us the tools to learn. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَسْئِدَةِ He gave us the ability to learn through hearing. We hear things. The scriptures and Hadith and Quran is transmitted by hearing. We hear it, it goes into our brain, it goes into our heart, and we remember it. And through eyes, through observation and experimentation. So transmission of information, observation and experimentation. And through our hearts, we reflect upon, through our, the intellect, through our intellect and our heart. And these are the three sources of knowledge. Transmission of information, experimentation and observation, as well as intellect and reflection. And knowledge has many benefits. Our ulama of usul and our ulama of sharia have told us that if a person does not use the tools that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, they become ignorant. We are born ignorant. We, don't, we know nothing. But if we remain as such, we don't use the tools, then it is as if we brought ignorance upon ourselves. And that's, there is no excuse for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a human being. And what is a human being? A human being is a living, is a rational living being. We have two qualities that define us as a human being. One of these two qualities is life, is our spirit and soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embodied us with. And the second quality that defines us as a human being is our intellect, our ability to learn. Our, we are capable of learning. We are able to learn. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, I am putting a successor on earth. They said, Oh Allah, are you going to put someone on earth that will shed blood and cause corruption? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them in two ways. He gave them two answers. One way by saying, Inni a'lamu wa la ta'lamun. That's a decision that the Creator has, has made. End of discussion. And the second way of answering is by demonstration. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا and he taught Adam everything, all the names. And he brought them before the angels. And he told them, this Khalifa on earth will not shed blood, will not corrupt the earth, if he learns properly. Education and learning and knowledge can be used in two ways. Can be used in a way to shed blood and cause corruption, and can be used in a way that will implement the Sharia and justice on earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the amana of taklif and entrusted us with moral responsibility, at the end he says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا Truly man is an ignorant and is an oppressor. And those two qualities are the qualities that will prevent us 
from fulfilling our mission on earth. The quality of ignorance and the quality of oppression. And what is the opposite of these two? Is knowledge and justice. Learn how, learning how to be just and learning knowledge that will be beneficial for us in, in this dunya and this life and in the hereafter. For ourselves and for those around us. And one of the things that knowledge, knowledge has many features. One of the features that inshallah will end this short khutbah with is that knowledge will benefit us even after our deaths. إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ The Prophet Sallallahu says, when a person dies, all his work has stopped, except for three things. And among the three things, he mentioned عِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ Something, some knowledge that he learned and transmitted to others and taught others that became beneficial for everyone. And he mentioned two other things. وَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُ لَهِ If you learn properly and you form a family and you have righteous children and they pray for you, this will also continue after our deaths. And knowledge is something that will remain with us even in the hereafter. Two things that when we die they go. Everything when we die they go except for two things. The ulama say marriage and knowledge. And the hereafter when we go inshallah in paradise, our spouses here in this dunya are our spouses in the hereafter. And knowledge that we learn in this dunya will benefit us in the hereafter. When we converse with those disbelievers who are going to have fire. And in the Quran there is an ayah specifically mentioned uh, for that. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم كلما تمتعت عين بنظر ووعت أذن بخبر عباد الله اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانتهوا عما نهى عنه وزجر وأخرجوا حب الدنيا من قلوبكم فإنه إذا استولى أسر واعلموا أن الله عز وجل أمركم بأمر عميم بدأ فيه بنفسه وسنى بملائكة قدسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين ورضي الله عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأعلى يا مولانا كلمة الإيمان والحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين غير ذلك فخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدر تولى المسلمين في هذه البلدة وسائر بلاد الإسلام بعين عنايتك وبأتم رعايتك وأبد العسر يا مولانا يسرا عاجلا غير آجل يا رب العالمين وفرج الكرب عن المكروبين ونفس الهم عن المهمومين وردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا كريما يا أكرم الأكرمين اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغل يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة